Welcome back to Boxes to Bills. Jim McCleary, most awarded certified club maker club fitter at the McGolf shop where you can learn about fittings, repairs, and club reviews. If you like the video, how about you like it down below and swing and hit that subscribe button and that way that you'll see more of these videos when they come along. Now this is a twofer and I'm going to explain. I've let off a couple of days because I got something going on with my neck and I haven't been able to pick up a golf club, let alone fix them, for a couple of days. Now I'm uh, working under heavy massage and whatever and I'm fitting these in between, in between all that. So I'm going to get two of the repairs done because one is going to Miami, Oklahoma. Miami, Oklahoma. And the other one is going to Colleen, Texas. And I want to get them there by the end of the week. So I got to get going now. So we're going to talk about each repair individually. One is about an, one is about a, an assembly, more of a spec. And then the other one will be about technique. So this one, this is volume three, volume three. And the other one will be volume four. So let's figure out what this is going to be. Okay, volume three. We are going to we are going to Miami of Ohio, uh, Miami, no, not of Ohio, Miami of Oklahoma, and we are fixing a a Mizuno JPX EZ forged eight iron, JPX forged eight iron, and what it had in it is a flighted rifle 6.0. Now, a couple things here. It's, it came to me it came to me in two pieces. So that's always unique, right? However, here's here's one thing when we put on a grip. Now just watch my hand. Alright. So this is like one of those grips where you put the like when you go to the putt putts and they don't put on the, <laughs> the grips. So Patrick if you've got still have some of these on there you might want to check that if you're having a bit of an inconsistency the second thing is project x flighted okay so what's a flighted shaft the the flighted concept was a long time ago when uh rifle was its own entity and what it was is the upper end shafts were made to hit the ball in a more penetrating flight the middle of the middle of the set was to hit it in the normal rifle, you know, arc, and then the lower end was supposed to hit him higher and softer. And the way you did that was, as you went about trimming them, you, you you took a bunch of different shafts, you made the calculations, and if you heard the term spinner, you were doing that kind of at the lower end, and then the the hard stepping was down at the at the upper end. Well, they don't do this anymore. They don't have that anymore, at least not from my supplier. So I had to call Patrick and ask him what he wanted to do. Now, I can do this, okay? However, I've got to take it apart to figure out what I've got to do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take it apart. And it's a simple shaft pull, and you've seen, you've seen me do it. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to try this again in one of these corners. You're going to see, you've seen shaft pull. So I'm going to do a shaft pull real quick. Which means, which means that we're gonna, you know, heat this guy up, take it out, heat that guy up, pull that off, and then we're gonna see what kind of hosel I have in order to determine what kind of repair I am going to do. So give me a minute. All right, I had to determine whether or not I was gonna use a parallel tip and drill it out, or if I was gonna use a taper tip and use a standard uh, shaft for it. And I had to go back and do some old school calculation. And this is what they give you when you went through a certified rifle center. And you would do all that you would basically, long story short is you maneuver this. It's like an old slide rule and it tells you the frequency that you have to shoot for on your initial cut. And because of the length, the, our regular 8 iron is going to work because of the length and the weight of the head. 
it's going to give us that flighted feel that we already had. So we already have now we have the shaft, we have the head. It's about spining and spining and flowing and gluing it up, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so you saw the spine in the flow. We're going to put a nice black uh, ferrule on it just to make it look like it did. We're going to glue it up and cut it to length. And that will be the end of the repair. So we'll just do it real quick after it's assembled so I can show you what it looks like when it's all done. Day 2, Boxes to Builds, Volume 3, where we are working on a Mizuno 8-iron JPX EZ. Okay, and it came to me in two pieces. He'd prefer it to be in one. Uh, first things, the club was not broken in anger, just being stupid, practicing swings indoors. Cool. And found you via YouTube. Truly enjoyed the content. Thought what better way to support you than have you repair the 8-iron. Patrick, thank you so very much. And it's going to Miami, Oklahoma. Miami, Oklahoma. I did kind of look it up. And I believe, hold that thought. Okay, we've got Oklahoma, and Miami is right there, right there on the Kansas border. I'm gonna make sure, yep, right there on the Kansas border. So, not too bad. Again, thank you, Patrick. Oh, and for those of you guys who have not seen that, there you go. That's my boxes to build map. You see all the pins that are on it so far? My goal is one day I'll have a pin in every one of those states. One day. Alright, so, what do we have to do? Well, the real thing was is that he had a Project X 6.0 flighted shaft. Now, last night when I was talking to you guys, my neck was hurting pretty bad, so right now it's not, so hopefully I'm a little more coherent now. Flighted means that we're trying to flight the ball, and it takes a few clubs out of the top end, a few clubs out of the middle end, and then a few clubs out of the bottom end, and it adjusts the shaft to help adjust the flight to get what you want out of the ball, i.e. not a ballooning trajectory with a top iron, but a more penetrating one, so you get a better ball flight. Then the middle of the road, the middle of the shaft, so the middle of the irons are your traditional Project X flights and then your lower irons you get much higher so it comes in softer maybe a little more spin which would be in my opinion where the idea of the spinner came from if for those of you guys who remember what spinner shafts are so I had to really dig deep in order to make sure that I was doing it correctly and I had to go out and get the old-fashioned I mean this one still says Brunswick on it I've got one that says rifle on it too I believe Anyway, those are that's the rifle protractor, and what this does is using club head weight, insertion depths, length of the club, the swing weight you want to get, what kind of shaft that you could use in order to hit the mark of what 6.0 is. And after a few minutes of doing some research and going back, it's like studying a college class that you haven't used in years. Well, I figured out what we needed was just the standard eight iron because of the insertion depth and the extra length that we're going to do this hit the mark by a point one so we're doing pretty good Patrick so what we've done is so what we've done is we've got the ferrule on it's a nice ferrule looks just like the ones that were on there before and we're going to smooth that guy down and you guys have seen me smooth out some ferrules I'll put some links up here I'm going to smooth that guy down we're going to cut it to the length that we are and put on the guy's shaft. Uh, let's talk about the Mizuno. Okay, Mizuno's, you know, widely known for having excellent forging. 
they do. It's, it is grain flow forging, which is a process unique to Mizuno to give you that feel that they have been widely known for. Mizuno has always been known to be a player's iron, player's iron. And they were competing against other people putting out player's irons. And because they weren't as big a company in the golf industry, that they were losing market share. So what they did is they came up with the EZ. And the EZ, the EZ is a, a longer blade, a little more offset, uh, nice forgiving forged iron that a lot of people just jumped right on and I don't see why not right nice cavity it's gonna have that traditional Mizuno feel and it's a slightly darker version which people tend to be looking at right now so a good club and it took off and is very popular to this point I've done a few of these so it's a good call on Mizuno's part and now they've made a little bit of a foray into the woods if you go back out and you search the internet for Mizuno Woods, that uh, I believe it's ST180 is doing pretty good, or is a good, you know, it's not a it's not a giant killer, but it's a uh, a good wood. So again, Patrick, thank you so much for allowing me to fix your eight iron. I'm going. Oh, one last thing, Mizuno's down in this neck of the woods right here, down at the very end. At the very top of the hosel, instead of being straight, they tend to curve in a little bit. And that's the reason why you don't see when guys do refinishing on these things that they stick out and you have that little lip that, you know, I'm not real friendly with. So you got to get in there and you got to turn it down just a little bit more than the average. I wanted to let you guys know that on Mizuno's. So when you're taking apart clubs and you look, if they're not perfectly like that and they're in here a little bit like that, you mean you got to do a little more massaging around the end of that so it just gives it more professional look we did the spine and flow so the it'll be a logo down basically and we should be good to go so again uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of the finished product so you can enjoy what we did and again Patrick thank you so very much and yes you should have it by Sunday and your pen seeker will be back and again fellas let's see your scores go low Test, 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 test.